hello, welcome to, uh, I guess this is the first video of my uh, new YouTube channel. I think I've called this cowhide music because I kind of have this big cowhide rug in my living room and kind of like it. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, today I wanted to make this video. I've, I've really wanted to make this video for a long time and it's specifically about um, something that was sort of raging in the guitar community a couple months back, which is uh, the sound quality of the Mustang GT series. And specifically, I'm going to talk about the GT40, which is the amp that I bought. Um, I was a very early adopter of this amp. Um, I think I bought it probably a couple of days after it was released, um, maybe a week or two. I can't quite remember. Um, Nonetheless, uh, when it was first reviewed on YouTube, it was widely panned um, as sounding very muddy, sounding like it had a blanket over itself, and sounding out of phase. Um, and I think a lot of this um, really has come down to um, a very poor release job by Fender in terms of um, the global EQ settings. I've done a lot of reading on the forums and it appears that the amp was initially released with an EQ um, that was really def uh, really set for hi-fi sound of streaming um, music through it to play along with as in, a, in a practice setting. Um, and one of the problems with the series is that the amp doesn't really know what it wants to be, whether it wants to be a practice amp or whether it wants to really be something that you would go take out live. That is the the difference between the GT40 and I think the GT100. They're completely different animals for what they're intended to be used for, but fundamentally the software and everything is the same, which kind of makes it um, difficult to please everyone. But at least in terms of practice, I think the GT40 now actually sounds pretty good. There have been a number of updates since it was first released. I'm currently up to release 1.6.32 on the firmware, I believe, or all the software updates, whatever that's called. Um, along the way, um, Fender changed the global EQ set and added a number of things, including Guitar Focus 1 and Guitar Focus 2. I typically have been keeping the amp set on Guitar Focus 2. That really, I think, lets the amp open up and breathe. It sounds a lot better. Um, and sort of to give you an idea of what it sounds like now, um, I've made a project in Reaper here this morning to record the intro to One Way Out, which is a fairly classic blues song most people will be familiar with. Um, and to record this, I actually mic'd the GT40 with two microphones. I mic'd the bass port with a Sennheiser E609, which is a pretty um, standard uh guitar cabinet miking mic <laughs> miking mic that's pretty funny um and the other one i used was a samson q6 which is similar to an sm58 but a little bit cheaper and i used that to um mic the front right speaker when you're looking at the amp um, i played this using an epiphone century inspired by 1966 which is similar to the James Bay Signature Epiphone Century. Um, it's a little cheaper, it doesn't come with a case, and I think the P90 pickup between the two guitars is a little bit different, but nonetheless, it's a single P90 near the neck position. The guitar comes stock with 11 gauge strings. I just bought the guitar like yesterday and haven't even changed the strings, but um, it's, a full, it's a full hollow body. So this really is, I think, a pretty good test in the sense that the guitar is going to have some pretty good low end. And if the Mustang really is a muddy blanket sounding amp or a blanket over it sounding amp, then this guitar should really bring out those features. Um, what I hope to show here today, at least, is that you can actually get pretty good sounds out of the amplifier uh, under its current um, release and under the current software updates. So what I have here in Reaper is um, the first four tracks. Uh, the first two tracks are a rhythm track, which I said, again, were double tracked using two microphones, um, the space port microphone and the front microphone. And all the effects I have in Reaper are basically just mixing effects or, or noise gates. So here I have a ping pong effect on the two rhythm channels to ping pong, ping pong back and forth on left and right. 
and I use a noise gate as well to try to limit the, the hum out of the amplifier at higher gain. Um, and then the lead track, a, a small lead track that I, that I recorded, um, the eff effects on these lead tracks, again, are things like noise gates. Um, I was planning on playing with a stereo chorus in one section, but I decided against that. And instead, I ended up using a um, tape, a tape echo um, in must in, from the Mustang itself. So you're getting the sound of the of the amp model, and and really, it's the only thing I do in the mixing is just set levels and apply noise gates, and again, pan the the rhythm tracks back and forth because I think it sounds a little bit better. But um, I just wanted to see what people's opinions were. If anyone has ever Anyone who ever panned the amp in the beginning has ever gone back and tried it again. Um, and for those people that are on the fence, this may be help you on your decision. I still think it's a pretty solid product. There are other good products out there as well, but this is just uh, what I've stuck with. I've stuck it out and I think it sounds pretty good. It sounds good in the room and I think it actually can sound good recorded. So here's the recording that I made this morning. <laughs> So that was it. Um, pretty short recording. Just wanted to sort of do this for a demonstration purpose. Let me know what you think, if you have any comments, um, especially if you've had any positive experiences. If you've had negative experiences, um, I think most of the people have already heard that. So leave your comment if you like. But uh, yeah, I happen to be a fan of this amp still. So yeah, thank you.